All right, here's a quick tutorial on how to create your door panel on the CNC router. So this is what it's going to end up looking like. I'm going to show you how to do some text. I'm going to show you how to do a picture here. Getting a picture from the internet, bringing it in, and getting it set up on this door panel. I'm going to close this for right now. Hit no. The first thing you have to do is get into vCarve Pro. So you're going to go down to the start button. You're going to type in vCarve, VC, and you should get vCarve Pro 8.5. I already got it open, so I'm going there. Okay, so VCar Pro starts out like this. This is the, the software that writes the G code so that the router can understand it. And G code is the language that those CNC routers speak. So we're going to create a new file. And the first thing we do is we set up the size of our piece of material. Our doors are seven and a half inches wide by 13 inches tall. So I got that off here, seven and a half inches wide, 13 inches tall. This door is laying on its side so it can fit on that sheet of paper better. So seven and a half by 13. The thickness is three quarters of an inch, which that translates into 750 thousandths, or 0.75. And the zero is on the top. XY datum position, this means where 0, 0 is. So this is X, this is Y, and the 0, 0 is the lower left-hand corner. And I'm going to hit OK. And that sets up my chunk of material. So this is like my board that I have available to me. So the first thing you have to do is get a piece of clip art. So I'm going to go find the clip art. Now, I generally look for a silhouette. If you find just a picture, it's not going to turn out very good on the carving. But if you do a silhouette, it's going to turn out fairly good. So you can think about this as whatever is black here is going to get carved out. Whatever is not black will remain full thickness here. So I'm taking a look at this. This has got some pretty good detail on it. If I carve that out, leave this stuff, I'll probably be able to tell that's a duck. But if I look down here and I get into some of these other ones here, um, this one looks pretty nice and it's got a little bit extra detail, looks a little better. So I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to hit Save Image As and I'm going to drop it onto my desktop. So on the left-hand side here, I want to go desktop. Here I want to put ducks. And hit save. So now I have my ducks saved onto my desktop. I'm going to go back into vCarve Pro. And I'm going to bring that ducks picture in. So I'm going to import the bitmap. So it's that top row and it's the furthest right one. And I'm on my desktop, this PC desktop, and I found Docs right there, and hit open. So it comes in, but it's pretty small. I want to make that bigger. So I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to go to Transform Objects about halfway down. And I can just grab these little boxes now, and I can scale that up. I want to stay a little away from the edges because I have to do a little bit of routing. But scale that up looks pretty good. And then hit close. So now this is a bitmap image. We have to trace it. And before we trace it, we want to get this centered up and down, left and right on my board. So the centering looks like this. It's a line. It looks like a square with four arrows. I'm going to click Align, I'm going to click my duck, and Align to Material is the top one. This is a line left and right, this is a line up and down, this is a line in all four directions. This will put it exactly in the center on the whole thing. Again, Align to Selection, those are all pretty straightforward. So I got that centered up now, put that in there. Now we have to convert this from a bitmap image, which is a JPEG image, to a 
vector drawing, which means it's going to trace an outline around everything here that's black. So we're going to go right to here. It looks like the little birdie. Trace bitmap. Because we picked a silhouette, we can do black and white. Number of colors, we're good there. I want to go tight fit. Try that out. And I'm going to slide down. Just with the default, I'm going to hit preview. And I'm going to zoom in here. That's fitting pretty well, I would say. Um, I'm going to try to slide a little bit and hit preview. See if I can get a little bit curvier lines on there. Okay, there I got some curvy lines. That looks a little bit more natural. And I'm going to hit apply. Now I have the outline done. And I'm going to hit close there. So I have the bitmap and the outline. At this point, I can pick the bitmap like that, and I have an outline. And I can see what's going to get carved. It's going to carve all this stuff out. And I can determine if I like what that's going to look like or not. Maybe I don't think this looks like a duck anymore and I want to try a different one. Simple, click it, delete it, bring in a different picture. All right, let's say I do like the duck. Now it's time for some text. So I'm going to go to draw text. And there's wrap text along curve, convert object to curves. But I'm going to start out with text here. And I'm going to put on, on it. I'm going to center a line. You always want to center a line. You can pick your font. There's hundreds of them to choose from. I'll just click this nice big thick one here. Center, text height is one inch, so that's actually an inch tall text. And I'm going to click out here, and look at that, it placed it out there. Don't like that font? That's fine. I can pick a different font. Type it in again, and I'm good to go. But for the sake of time, I'm going to keep that font right there. So I can pick on that font. I can do a transform, which is move it. So I can grab it and move it around. I can do a scale and I can grab it. Oh, there's a rotate. Control Z if you don't like what you did. I can scale it up or scale it down so I like the size. I can do a distort. So this is how I can add a little bit of text to it. Or a little bit of feature to it and work my way that way. I also want to center this so I don't want to center it if I center it, click this it's going to center it to the middle of my duck and I don't want to do that. I want to center it to the center of my paper left and right though or my board left and right and now I'm set up there. Okay so if you notice Pink means it's highlighted and selected. Black means it's not. I'm going to hold down Shift on the keyboard, and I'm going to click both pieces to highlight both pieces. Now I like what it looks like. Now comes time for toolpaths. Toolpaths, show toolpaths tab, or it's right over here. We're going to do, we don't care about this information here. We're going to talk about toolpath operations. The one that we want to pick is a pocket, or sorry, a V carve engraving toolpath. We're going to start depth is zero, flat depth is 0.125 inches, tool is a V bit, 90 degrees. 12 millimeter. 
that's all fine. Feeds and speeds over here. I'm going to go inches per minute. Feed rate is 100. Plunge rate is 40. Spindle speed is 10,000. Tool number one. Final pass, pass depth. This is all set up correctly. Let me go to inches here. Instead of 12 inches, we're going to go to 0.75 inches. Include angle 90 path depth. All of that is set up. We're going to hit apply. Pass depth of 6 inches is greater than, so pass depth should be 0.125. And actually I'm going to go 126 to be just over the depth that I'm cutting. And then I'm going to come down here, I'm going to type my name, and I'm going to hit calculate. And this is all the information of where the bit's going to drive all over the place, all over on this whole piece. Now I want to see what it's going to look like. So if I go over to the side here and I can click, I can drag, I can see this router bit going up and down and all around here. So I'm going to hit preview visible toolpaths and I can slow this down and I can see what that router is going to do and what it's going to look like when it's all done. I can see what it's going to look like, and I can say, hmm, yeah, that looks pretty good. I like what it's looking like. So I'm happy with my toolpath. I'm going to hit close there. I like what's happening. Got my name here, and I'm good to go. So I'm going to go over here. are all my different settings for toolpaths. I'm going to hit Save Toolpath. I'm going to go here, Axiom HHCCM. select my toolpaths and hit save toolpaths. Now when I'm saving this here I have to go over on the left hand side I need to get into the H drive. Or you can save it onto your desktop and then put it into your Google Docs. So that'll probably be the faster way for you guys. So we're going to go to desktop, we're going to go to Put your name on it so you know where it is and hit save. And if you don't put it into Google Drive, you're going to lose it. So I want to go to new folder. Or sorry, new part. I'm just in my Google Drive here. It was on my desktop. Got to find it right there, han.mmg. Click and drag and drop it in. So it's starting to upload and I have it in my Google Drive now. Then when I get into the shop, I can pull it off my Google Drive from my Chromebook, put it onto a USB drive, and I can load it up into the tool.